there Robloxians! Today I'll be making part 2 to the ultimate guide to Roblox scripting. I highly, so highly recommend you watch part 1 before watching this tutorial if you have not already. Today I will be guiding you through the use of global variables. So I'm already in Roblox Studio and I'm in the base plate template. So let's go make a script in server script service. So we can go over here to server script service, right click, go to insert object and insert a script. We're going to delete this print hello world here. And I'm going to show you how to make a global variable. And it's actually very easy. So because some of you might be in math class, I'll make this easy and make the global variable named X. So we just, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it, you just put it there and then you do equals whatever value you want. You can do a string, you can do a number. There's other things you can use, but right now all we know is numbers and strings. So let's go put a number and make it equal to five. Well, now we have the variable X right here and X is equal to five. So right now that's pretty useless to us and we can't do much with that. But if we go back to our, if we go back to what we learned in part one, we can take print back and we can now, instead of printing like five, like we did in part one, we can now print X. Now before this, X printing X would have left an error because X was not a defined global variable. If we delete X equals five, you can see this blue line come down and it says unknown global X. Now let's put that X equals five back and you can see the line goes away and it is now a global variable. So now it understands what to print. So Roblox is very nice to let you know when something is not a global variable or it doesn't know what it wants you to do. So let's go and let's play this. Let's play test this print. Okay, we can see now in the output, it says five. And like we printed, we printed X. So you might be confused that it doesn't print X, but because of up here, X equals five, it prints what X equals. X doesn't equal X, X equals five now. So let's go and say, uh, let's, uh, let's stop the game first. Always stop the game first. And let's say Y equals seven. Now let's go uh, Y minus X. So this would be Y, which equals seven minus X, which equals five. So that would be seven minus five if we substituted. So the answer inside print should be two. And so because the answer inside print is two, it should print out the number two. So let's go test that theory out. And we look in the output window again, and it says two. So perfect, that's exactly what we were expecting. We can go stop the game again enter the script, um, get into the script again. And now, what if we make a global variable a string? So now let's do x equals hello world. But wait, that doesn't totally work. We need it to be a string and strings are made strings by quotation marks. So let's put quotation marks around it. And now X makes sense. So let's delete the Y minus and just leave X and let's just print X. Now we get hello world because we made X equal hello world and we printed X and X is hello world. So it printed hello world. Now, what if we make Y? Now let's uh, add a line there. Let's go Y equals Hello, YouTube. What if we did X plus Y? Whoops. X plus Y. So now it there's no errors. So let's go play this. And now it says attempted to perform arithmetic. Arithmetic. Come on, super. It's arithmetic on global X. So it, it looks like it's perfectly okay, but it, it doesn't turn out well. So how you actually combine strings is either by comma. So let's test that out. Now we get hello world, hello YouTube, or like in part one, 
we can use double period. And so double period will also combine them together. But in double period, it doesn't add a space in between the two strings. Comma prints hello world. And then when you do a comma and then do another string, it will automatically put a space in the middle, just like in part one of this tutorial series. But if we actually want to put a space in between by using uh, double decimal, we just have to add a string here and then another double decimal. And then inside the, the quotation marks in the middle, all we have to do is add a space. And now it will print X and Y with a space in between. I do not recommend comma, but sometimes you do need to use comma. And it's easier sometimes, but I, personally, this is my personal opinion, I like using double period. Kind of looks cool to me, to be honest. Okay, so let's combine a string and a number. So let's make this five. And then let's make this string say uh, the variable x equals. And then so we want y to come first. So actually, let's change this around. Let's uh, to make this a little bit easier to understand. Let's make this x and let's make this y. OK, and let's do change that to the variable y equals and then y equals five. So this should be x, the variable y equals dot dot space. So it mashes space into the print and then it mashes y, which is five. So when we play this, it should say the variable y equals five. And there should be a space in between the equals and five because of this space we added here. So let's go play that and see. We look down and it says the variable y equals five. So this can be very, very useful in scripting. We combine print string and a variable. So what if we want to combine two variables at once with different values? So instead of having two lines, how do we condense this to one? We can, we can just do this. This is very ugly, having it x equals variable y and then having y equals 5 on the same line, you cannot tell what's going on. And if we play this, it works, it works, it does. You can do this, but this is not organized very well and I do not recommend doing this. What I recommend is, let's say, I'm going to do it on a separate line here so you can see the difference. We're going to use comma again, so x comma y you don't have to add the spaces in between but it makes it easier in my mind x comma y equals and then we want to do what x we want so let's put x's value here and then we want to put a comma after that and then we want to put y's value and then boom that's all we have to do it looks a little bit messy because uh, it doesn't look too well but when you have just two numbers, it looks much better. So if we play test this, we can tell that it works exactly the same, but we just condensed it to one line. So if you want to get down to the little details of this, so because we have it in the order of X comma Y, it says, okay, so X is first. So what it equals X will be the first term said or written. So it views the first ter term and that's what x is because that's the order of where x is in this part oh whoops but because y is after the comma it will say okay i see this comma right here that means y is whatever value comes after it so the first term always equals first term on the equal so x equals first term y equals second term but if we switch this around y comma x well, now it's flip-flopped. Now we, if we play, pl if we press play, it says five, the variable Y equals. So that doesn't make any sense. So order matters in this case with comma, order matters. Well, normally or order matters in always normally, but in this case, it definitely does. And you cannot mess that up. Now, if you had like, it would look a little bit nicer if you only had two numbers. So X comma Y equals seven comma five. So X equals seven. So it would say seven and five with a space in the middle. So that's perfectly fine. 
And that is really basically all for global variables that you need to know at this point of time. So the next tutorial will be on functions. And this is when stuff gets kind of interesting. It's one of the first things people learn when scripting. YouTube, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next tutorial. See you later.